<laughs> How are you doing, Adi? How are you doing? Can you hear me okay? I can. You're you're a special guest because you're the first guest in the history of lives on Iranian lawyers in North America that you got a non-Persian song. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> What's up? Happy I'm Monday. Sure. You too, likewise, man. It's been a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, up and down day. I think everybody that took the bar got an email today that officially we will get our results uh, January eighth. So the countdown begins. Okay. Well, Hassan Abashi, great job. Uh, before we start, even you get another honor, which is you are the very first live we did on the group, and actually the reason we do these lives is because of you. You because you had a job straight out of law school for a few weeks, you were a trainee, and you did a live with your supervisor that I saw on Instagram, and you were so well-spoken, always so well put together. Uh, yeah, I just stopped watching, and I was like, let's do these lives. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Ali, man. It's always good to get information out there for everybody. Yeah. So, Amir, you tell us, you, you took the bar this year, uh, just... 30 seconds on, on how the bar went and how was it virtually, and then we'll get into the recent stuff. Right, right. So the, the virtual bar, you know, it's, it's it was half and half, really, for a lot of people. It was, it was for half the people, it was some errors that happened, whether the, the laptop froze. Um, for the others, it went through seamlessly, but there was still some anxiety issues because, again, it was the artificial intelligence. You couldn't look away from the screen. You couldn't make any sounds. Nobody can make any sounds. And if if the artificial intelligence caught you looking away from the screen, like, you know, you think about it, you're taking an exam, you're taking a bar exam, you're going to doze off and, and not doze off, but look off and think. So those things will flag you for a violation and then they'll review it. And then um, once if once they review it, if they think that there might be a possibility that somebody cheated, they'll send it up to somebody else to review. And then if they think that somebody else might, that somebody might have cheated, they'll send them a chapter six violation, which is pretty much like, you know, being accused of cheating. Got it. And so the news came out what last week or two weeks ago that one third of everyone who took the bar in California got flagged for cheating. Yeah, I think anybody who took the bar is good, knows somebody that that got got the notice. You know, one of my two of my friends did as well too that took the bar and and I know you know they're not they didn't do anything wrong. Uh, I was next to them, but the kind of people they are, I know they haven't done, done anything wrong. It's just the system. Um, it's either exam soft or their laptop and. Uh, it's pretty bad. It's very to add. It's another stress to add on top of the stress. Yeah, yeah. So, can you tell us from your friend's case, like, what does the notice say? What's the process? What's the deadline for them to respond? Yeah, it's 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 very it's unannounced, right? So you, one day you check your email and you have an email from the admissions of California bar uh, exam, and the email says there's an attachment, and the attachment says notice of a violation of examination rules or policies and you know chapter six of the admissions rules is a very big deal chapter six is about you know is, is really about complying with all instructions rules and policies not violating any rules which will be uh rendered as you cheating so you get this notice and, and my friend's notice he he said that his eyes were intermittently off of the webcam you know on essays number like two and four in a performance test and then at the bottom of the letter, it says, you may respond in 10 days. And that's all it says. That's it. 10 days, that's it? It doesn't say 10 business days, 10 calendar days. And it says you may respond. So if somebody doesn't respond, um, do they default immediately? I mean, you know, Chapter 6 violation is a very big deal. You are literally accusing somebody of cheating. And any any person who's trying to be a lawyer or is a lawyer knows you you know, they look at your moral character very, very uh, strongly. So any cheating, you're done forever. You can't ever try to become a lawyer. So, and we don't know what it means intermittently, right? So there's a lot of people that got flagged and got notices for, um, their, it said the microphone was off during exams, like essays, let's say, you know, X, Y, and Z, number two, three, and four, or some of the MBE questions. And when you're taking this exam, you don't get a notice on your laptop if, uh, your microphone's not working or you you know if you're you can you were able to click a button to see your screen on the webcam to see if you're within the view but 
keep in mind, you know, as you're taking the bar, it's already stressful. You're not like, wait, let me make sure I'm in the view of the webcam and then stop what you're doing, click on this button, double check, and then go back. Um, that's the webcam view. Now, the microphone view, you don't get any notices. You don't know. And it's not up to us. We're locked out of our laptop once you use ExamSoft. So people are getting microphone notices. That's just a glitch in either ExamSoft or um, what I've been reading a lot is the Lenovo laptops had a big issue with the microphones and ExamSoft. And a lot of people who were using Lenovo's, it, their microphone just stopped working. So now they get this violation. They have 10 days to respond. And people are freaking out. They don't know what to, what to do. And the number one thing people are doing, uh, what everybody's trying to help each other is first contact your law school to help you write a response. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when they say don't talk to the police, you don't want to just send in a statement blindly and incriminate yourself or just say, yeah, you know, I, you know, you, you can't say, I don't know. I didn't know that. That's that. We, this has never happened before. It's unprecedented. So we don't even know what the process is like at this point. And to make matters worse, the February Cal, February bar exam is right around the corner. And the deadline to apply, for, to register for that is January 25th. And if you have one of these notices, you can't, you can't register and take that exam until this is resolved. So it's kind of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a cluster mess. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of information to take in, and I've been following every, and just trying to help these people as much as we can. You know, it's, it's, it's just attorneys that are trying to help. There's students who have paid or retained attorneys for thousands of dollars to help them write a response, and they're not even going to release the videos to the bar takers or their attorneys as of right now. I don't know if there's going to be a discovery process or not. Wow. Well, so these people, you said a lot of people are reaching out to their law schools for help. Have the law schools been helpful from what you hear, or...? From what I've heard so far is is the law schools haven't really been able to do anything. I mean, what if you're going to go to, again, this has never happened before. We've never had such a situation. So if you're going to the dean of your law school, what is he going to tell you? One of our one of our own law school, uh, one of our law school professors sits on the California State Bar. On, on the thing, I believe on the board or in some aspect of it. And my friend reached out to him and he wasn't sure either. You know, he's like, I can help you write a response, but it's probably best you retain an attorney to help you that deals with these with these issues. You know, there's attorneys that deal with the um, state bar, like more character um, issues and things like that. So now they have to shelve out. The least I've seen somebody pay is about $550. I have to shelve out another $500 um, to just retain that attorney just for the response. Mm -hmm. That's another barrier. Um, so... Folks, you know, Amir John, are they in the process of writing a response? Are they, uh, yeah, where, where, where are their heads at? So from the ones I've seen, my, like my friend, he's, you know, the, the lady, the attorney helped him, uh, wrote the response and they sent it in and they're just waiting. Others are kind of doing it in like, as like a community, you know, think like of a class action lawsuit, but everybody's getting together under one attorney that came on and said, hey, Whoever's received a chapter six violation, send me a message. I'm gathering everything and, you know, we're going to do this together. It's not right. So that's the latest I have on any uh, resolutions or anything like that at all. We don't know yet. So only, only thing that's happened is some people have sent in some statements. Some people, what they're doing that I've heard is when they write the statements, they're saying that we need more information and more time. Just so at least they respond something within 10 days. Or we don't have enough information to be able to give you a response. Because you're just saying, you know, somebody else's, yeah, I pulled up somebody else's. It says, your facial view of your eyes was not within view of the camera for a prolonged period of time. Also, no audible sound was detected. A functional internal microphone is required. This person had a functional microphone. They, they, the facial view of the eyes wasn't within view sometimes. I mean, what, is that, what does that mean? You know, did they look down? So based on that, you don't know what to, what are you going to respond? So they just, people are saying, I need, I need to see the video. I need more information. I'm still looking into this. Um, there's people who've contacted ExamSoft. Again, ExamSoft is a software that you use to take the uh, test. They've contacted ExamSoft and there's record of the emails saying ExamSoft, saying that the issue was with their system and the laptop so yeah and how are you supposed to respond to <laughs> like you looked away for a moment okay like uh like i'm just at a loss on how you're supposed to even respond to that like 
I, what can you say? You know, it's like proving <laughs> prove it. it's like, it's like prove, prove you weren't cheating. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You have to, <laughs> right. It's 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 the it's the opposite of you know having a burden. You have to like the burdens on the on a test taker is to prove something that they didn't do. Which you, how can you prove something you didn't do? You know. Yeah. It's, it's not like a criminal case where you can have like a alternative story or you know a, a defense or alternative theory. You know. So it's 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 very very difficult right now for everybody. And with that bar exam deadline coming up for the next one. Um, we're worried about for one third of the students, you know. Yeah, yeah. and and also that for the, like right around the holidays, a lot of people are already struggling with COVID, with not not having access to their family or friends. Um, so it's just like that. It's a cluster mess. Um, anything we can do, Amazon in the group to help you guys. I I really think the only if there is anybody in the group that is you know is proficient with the California bar. If there's any attorneys that do do that type of work, um, you know, please definitely leave your information on there. There's a lot of students who are running around just looking for the right attorney um, or just for the right guidance or assistance. So we can never have, uh, you know, enough of those attorneys to help us. And as far as the COVID thing, you know, to be honest, to be quite frank, my friend who got the one of the notices, two days before he got the notice, he's tested positive from COVID. So he had the stress of COVID fall by getting the uh, chapter six violation. And, you know, I can provide you a sample of the violation that they're getting and just block out the applicant's name so people can kind of see, or maybe those attorneys can see what they're going up against. Just a one page paper. Yeah, please do. We'll post that. And then uh, also you said if people are familiar with the bar to reach out, I would say if there are any students who got notices who need help. Right. Um, I'm sure we can at least, the least we can do is read over your response and just guide you on, on generally what to write. Uh, so that's the least we can do. So I'll post those two things for folks to reach out. We'll, we'll get this video on YouTube and send it to you, Amir John, so you can disseminate this. I think it's important for people to at least know what's going on and know you're not alone. If you like this, you're not alone. There's thousands of people who got it and there is help out there. Hopefully, hopefully we can help. Um, so thank you, Amrijan, for bringing our attention, for con con to monitor this. I would love to have you on more at Progresses. I know a lot of folks in the group are taking the February bar exam that I know of personally, so I'm sure there's a lot more. And at least we can, maybe one little thing we can do is to give them some warnings on right. what to do while you're taking the February exam so you don't have to deal with this mess after. Exactly. And because the February exam is going to be the same exact way it was administered in October as as far as right now you know the bars always changing rules so one big thing is if you have a Lenovo laptop make sure everything is working um, any communications you have at exam soft keep those emails and they will they they do release a mock uh, mock exam so you can test out the system they'll release two mock exams you can test out uh, keep every communication you you make um, just in case this happens and just Practice, practice, and not just practice taking the exam, but practice. Don't don't look away. Don't make any sounds. Make sure you're taking it in a quiet area. What I recommend for people, one of my one of the other one of my friends that took the bar, the smartest thing you can do, anybody that's taking the February bar exam, take it at your law school. Work with them, and the law schools will work with you. If you're taking it at your law school, at least you're gonna have somebody there. That God forbid you get one of these violations. They're going to attest for you. They're going to be attest that you were there and you did not cheat. There was no sounds. There was no, they checked your area. So the smartest thing people can do right now in February is get a hotel room by your law school and take it at the law school. So that way you're in a controlled environment where you have somebody that's an objective person that the California ball would just recognize as being, you know, they're not going to question law school. So as long as I believe they have to be accredited, I'm not sure. But I think any law school that you go to will um, suffice. That's wonderful advice. Thank you, Amir. We'll post that as the headline. Like when we took the bar exam in person, you do some things to prepare. Like you, you, you go to the test center the day before just to figure out where right. and kind of have your stuff ready. So this is kind of the prep for the new world is is <laughs> going to your law school and at least practicing when you take practice exams and practice looking straight ahead or i was thinking even have another camp room if possible to to film you the whole time so that 
you know, they have a backup YouTube, but, but we'll talk about this more. I mean, John, this is important. Thank you for your time. Uh, let's get this video out to everyone ASAP so they know their rights and what's going on. Definitely. Thank you, Ali. Anybody who needs any assistance, they can always, you know, reach out to us, um, reach out to you, reach out to me. And again, if you ever, if you did receive a chapter six violation, please don't go about this on your own. Have somebody help you, even if it's just reviewing your response. You know, if you campaign for an attorney, we can figure out ways to help you throughout the process and at least put you in touch with somebody. Absolutely. Damn it, Gamma, John. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. You too. Thank you, Ali. Thank you for having Thanks. me. Thanks, community. All right. Likewise. Bye.